Hello everyone, it is me, Jared Gaming here, and welcome back to the Splatoon 2 tier list of patch 5.0.1. Today we are finally on the high tier and top tier weapons. We're finally going to get into the stage where we're going to talk positive things about the weapons, so yay, woohoo! <laughs> Anyways, uh, without further ado, I think we already know what the deal is here, so without further ado, let's just get started. Alright, starting at the A tier, weapons that are could that can hypothetically be used in competitive or, you know, can be, you know, greatly used in just, just, you know, just all around. And, um, some of these weapons also have been top tiers before but have fallen off. And the greatest examples are actually, um, the first two weapons, which is the NZAP 85. You know, Suction Bomb and Ink Armor, that's a great kit for the NZAP, but I think the only reason why it's fallen off is because the Special Points nerf and the Splatter Shot Jr. and the Kent's Undercover Brother kind of existing, but... Used to have been a really good weapon. Used to have been the best painting weapon. Used to have been the uh, best weapon with suction bomb. Used to have been the best weapon with ink armor. It's an all-around great weapon. It's easy to use. Has a great strafing ability. It's just all-around great mobility. And it's got a great ink efficiency too. So used to have been great. But you know, now that the Splash Shot Junior kind of exists, you, it's there's almost no reason to use the NZF85. I mean, the NZF85 does have some things. The Splash Shot Junior doesn't have like range accuracy maybe suction bombs, but that's kind of really about it. Other than that, there's almost no reason to use the NZAP-85, unless you for some reason favor the weapon more than the Splash Shot Jr., then you know what, go right ahead. Another weapon that used to have been top tier was the Kenza Sashi Machine, because, you know, Fizzy Bomb used to have been really broken, and then everyone figured out that the Sloshy Machine had like an unnecessary big hitbox, which is kind of a hilarious common problem with Splatoon 2. They just they just always have some unnecessary big hitboxes, but Kenza Sloshy Machine has received way too many nerfs. And it's like, is it even worth uh you know <laughs> is it even worth talking about anymore? No one really uses the weapon. Like now it's a bit harder to use, just a bit. So <laughs> it's just harder to use now so I, I think you guys might know why it's fallen off it's just the unnecessary amount of nerfs it was well not really unnecessary because no one really liked the weapon no one really liked going against it only the people that liked it are the ones that were using it so next I have Kensa Dynamo Roller this is this I feel like this could be a great weapon because it's a it's a long-range weapon it's a really powerful weapon with sprinkler or a really slow weapon with sprinkler so it helps it paint and it also has Booyah Bomb uh, backliner weapon with Booyah Bomb, I feel like, can be pretty good. Or, I wouldn't say Dynamo is a backliner, but it's more of like a, a midliner-ish. So, it having Booyah Bomb is like, I think is really good, but... Obviously, there's like two more other options that are just better with Booyah Bomb, but we'll get into those later, and I'm pretty sure you should know what they are, but... Kensa Dynamo is really good. It's pretty good, actually. Uh, Kensa Mini Swatling. A good main weapon really good main weapon with you know great strafing mobility but it has toxic mist and that is not necessarily amazing but it does have hammer and ultra stamp well ultra stamp is hammer but ultra stamp allows it to do some pretty crazy things allows it to go around places very uh, dynamically i guess ultra stamp's just a really good special so it having ultra stamp can do some pretty crazy things with it and you know the fact that it can paint and the fact that it can you know strafe around it's pretty. Is that's what makes the weapon pretty crazy. Next, I have ten attacks flower shot. The next patch is actually getting buffed, but this isn't the next patch. So let's talk over about this patch. Uh, ink jet just falling off a lot because everyone can aim at it, and ten attacks flower shot doesn't really spam ink jet like splash automatic. Even though splash automatic isn't that high on the list, but the the gist is that it doesn't spam the uh, ink jet, and um. Splat having Splat Bomb though is really good. It's literally the most overall rounded weapon in the game, but it's better than the Splatter Shot at least. Burst Bomb, Splash Down. Even though Burst Bomb could be pretty good, but there is that, um, there is Ink Jet. And Ink Jet is better than Splash Down. And Splat Bomb could be just as good as Burst Bomb, so, I mean, it's really dependent, but, you know, Splatter Shot having a pretty, uh, efficient Ink Tank just allows it to be very all around. Kent's a Rapid Blaster. I would have rated this lower if it wasn't for the one who's a competitive Splatoon 2 gamer and also um, plays with the Kent's a Rapid Blaster. It's probably the only blaster in the game that's actually like really good. Not by a long shot. Well, actually, yeah, maybe kind of by a long shot because it's got Torpedo and Baller. Torpedo, used for pressuring, and that's also what the Rapid Blaster itself does. It like picks off people 
or it kind of like pressures people and torpedo puts extra pressure on some people. The only uh, weapons that wouldn't get pressured by torpedo is shooter weapons like, you know, uh, Splattershot Pro, Splattershot, Splattershot Junior, you know, weapons like those. Literally any shooter. But if it was like, a, you know, a splatling where it will have to give up some of its uh, charge time to shoot down the torpedo, which that alone is actually kind of hard to do, to be honest. Or if it's a charger that has to give up some of its charge duration, or, you know, its charge shot to, you know, shoot down the torpedo or throw a bomb at it if it has a bomb, which is, which might be, you know, which is time consuming. Not by a, a lot of time, but like, you know, enough to get you distracted. Or if it was for, for say, a roller. Like a dynamo roller that would also put pressure on the dynamo roller since it's really slow and you know if it was the gold dynamo roller for say then it would have to either a give up some of its ink for splat bomb to throw at the torpedo or b it would have to just swing at the torpedo and just hope not to get hit first which more than likely it will get hit first so there's not really anything a dynamo roller could do about it baller again it's a really good special having it on a kenso rapid blaster is also pretty good I feel like this is just an example of a weapon that gets carried by its kit, or it's like again, kind of like the Glugu Dui Deco, where its potential kind of gets unlocked from the kit. But I'm putting it down here for now because no one really plays with this weapon, except for the one. So, and I mean, if more people played with this weapon and if more people started realizing that's actually like pretty good, then maybe I would rate it higher. But for now, I'm gonna rate it down here. And then next, I have a Kensa L3 Nozzle Nose. I feel like. It would be great, but like, I don't see it doing some crazy things with, you know, Splash Wall. I mean, it has Ultra Stampin' again, that allows it to be pretty crazy, but, I mean, it does have some, it does have range. And it does have Splash Wall, so it does allow it to, you know, play a bit more defensive. But, you have the other L3 kits, which are meant to play more aggressively, so. I, I mean, I don't see you know, any problems with this, this is why it's on high tier, so it's like. You know, when you got Splash Wall, you could defend yourself when you're trying to shoot at them, but which shouldn't really be that hard because it's H3 on easy mode. Um, yeah, I, I just think it's pretty good. I don't really have a lot to say about it. Uh, next one, I don't know how a lot of people might feel about this, but next one I have Splattershot Pro. Uh, my reason is, for Splattershot Pro, you need that main power-up. Well, maybe you need that main power but you also need that special power-up. And uh, Splattershot Pro, you don't really need that. You just need to main power up and then boom, it's a pretty good weapon. Put on some, you know, put on a little bit of sub power up, put on a little bit of quick super jump, maybe put on a little ink resistance, and then boom, it's a really good weapon. I mean, point sensors, maybe it's not necessary and competitive because you have call outs, but it can help you in terms of aiming and it can help you if um, enemies just happen to be in certain positions you can't necessarily call out. And plus, not only that, but you know, as an enemy, you don't want to be point censored at all costs. So, getting point censored and or avoiding it in general is it's kind of not as easy as you think. So, especially if you're going to be spamming it everywhere, where now you can throw two at a time without ink saver sub, which is really good. So, yeah, that that's a plus up. And the fact that it could also be thrown even further, further with sub power up makes it all the better so and then also the fact that it has ink storm which again ink storm is just a good special and the fact that's on a weapon that doesn't paint really well so and also it only takes like 170 points to get ink storm on the splatter shot pro so i think that's why it's really good and should not be underrated uh next i have the 96 deco um i feel like m maybe this could be higher because it has splash wall and it's RN well, it doesn't have that much bad of an RNG anymore because it's received so many buffs, like it's received extra range, it's received slightly better accuracy, so that's really nice. Giving it Splash Wall helps it play defense or helps it survive longer, and that's also the same thing with Splashdown. It's just, those two things are mostly used as like a panic mode, like, hey, I'm getting shot down, I better shoot, you shoot out the Splash Wall so that I can, you know, shoot them down before they shoot me down. Oh hey, they're kind of, you know, up on me. I better splash down. I just hope that they don't, you know, shoot out my splash down, which depending on what weapon it is, maybe it won't. There are some weapons that are pretty good with splash down. But I feel like the 96 is the best with it or is one of the best with it is because it's got that it's got it's got really good range. It's got really good range. Um custom jet sculpture. I always thought that this weapon was like one of the best weapons in the game, but like the more that I realize it, it's kind of not. It's a backliner weapon. 
and with burst bomb which of course isn't that bad i think that's actually one of the reasons why it's really good so it's like if someone gets really up close to you just throw a burst bomb at them then you can actually start fighting them but fighting up close with the jet sculpture is obviously pretty difficult and also there's you know charger with stingray i mean custom jet i feel like it's just easy mode of charger with the cost of you know range and power so that could be kind of detrimental but custom jet that doesn't mean it's bad it just means that there's a possible better option and one of them could also be heavy spotlight um sprinkler again uh main weapon can paint but giving it sprinkler make gives it the ability to paint in two different areas um which allows it to also get stingray faster than you know charger so but this weapon has i i, I feel like the main reason why this weapon has been falling off a lot is just i don't really see anyone playing with this weapon massively like this used to have been a weapon that a lot of people would play with but now I don't really see a lot of people playing with it, and plus there's also the Heavy Spotlight Remix, and I'll, I'll go over why that's very good, so, um, Heavy Spotlight, pretty good, but, uh, not really a lot of people play with it, Ma a main weapon that's pretty good, um, Sprinkler, which of course helps it paint better, and then Stingray, which, you know, fulfills its backline roll, so, that's pretty good, and Perry Splat Dooley's. Uh, would have rated higher if no one could aim at the inkjet. It used to have been top tier weapon, guarantee. Probably even one of the best weapons in the game, uh, along with the end zap as well. But again, people can now aim at um, inkjet, so it's like, do you want to use this weapon? I mean, it's got curling bomb, so it can help around go around places. Uh, in my opinion, better than the uh, splat roller, so because you know it's a weapon that can paint better than splat roller, and you know it. Depending on what you do, it could probably kill faster because it's got that tyrant mode where the fire rate like increases by twice the rate. So that I think is really, really, really good and just better than the spot roller, which is definitely why I would rate this higher than the spot roller. Um, but I guess the reason why that you would want to use spot roller over Empire Dualies is you know splashdown usage and you know you want to play sneaky with it. But then again. Sometimes playing sneaky isn't always the answer in competitive, especially when there's a lot of things going around. So, and especially if your team gets suppressed, then Empire Duels could do something. Could do something, especially with Inkjet. Um, next to have the Light Tetra Duels. Uh, main what? I used to always doubt this weapon, just because of the because of the main weapon not being able to paint, and it has the same range as the Slosher, which means it does get outranged by Spider Shot Pro. Uh, you know, 96, H3, and um, Dually Sculptures as well, Tenebrella, but the wep the main weapon itself is crazy. I'll go over that, why the main weapon itself is crazy uh, in when we get to the Dark Tetra Duelies, which is placed higher, but Sprinkler, Autobomb, it helps it get its special. Autobomb Launcher, I'm not sure how I feel about it. It can be used pretty good. Sprinkler, of course, it's a good, uh, it, it, I feel like it, Sprinkler is good. Because it helps it paint, but without auto bomb as its sub, I feel like it has to play a little less aggressive. So I think that's what makes it a bit difficult. It is kind of hard to kill with this weapon, admittedly, because its RNG is kind of bad. But with auto bomb, it kind of helps it better. So that's why I have the uh, like Tetra Dooley kind of just aimed um, down here. But it, I feel like it could be underrating it. Maybe it's better than I think. I don't know. And next I have Neo Splashomatic or Splashomatic Neo. Or I think it's Neo Splashomatic. I don't know. Burst Bomb, Selection Bomb Launcher, I just feel like, uh, just, you know, it's perfect. It's kind of perfect, at least. I mean, Burst Bomb, giving it on a short-range weapon, I feel like that could be used better for close combat, but Selection Bomb Launcher, I mean, it, it, it takes 210 points, but, like, with a weapon that, like, paints super amazingly, like, all you have to do is just, like, look, if, if there's just this one area that your teammates haven't painted, just, just go over there. Paint there for, like, 10 seconds without even special charge up you'll get your special pretty much right away it paints just that amazing it just really does and you know along with the fact that it has burst bump so now you can play more aggressively with it and then now you can use suction bomb launcher to just throw everyone off so that's it's it's really good it's really good on something like splat zones turf war rainmaker tower control and clam blitz i'm not sure clam blitz i feel like it could work uh i'm not sure about tower control though Rainmaker, I feel like it, it could put some work, but it really depends on how you want to play with it. I mean, if anything, I think the regular slash is better at Rainmaker, but because, you know, Toxic Mist does slow down to the Rainmaker, but 
Um, I don't know. It's just really dependent. And then for the last weapon on the A tier, I have the Foil Squeezer. Um, I'm going to rate it down here for now because it used to have been pretty bad, but immediately after, you know, main power up with the weapon and object trade, everyone, after everyone figured out that it is better, then the main weapon at least is hypothetically better than the Splatter Shot Pro. So that's why I have it here. I feel like it's one of the better weapons with Bubble Blower, excluding the um, Tenderbrella for reasons why. Um, foil Squeezer, I feel like it's just, you know, it has, it's got Splat Bomb, it's got that weird, uh, tap mode, or the weird, like, you know, pop mode, where, like, it has, like, ridiculous reach, and it just does, I don't know, it, it's, it's one of those weapons where you just don't expect to, like, do a lot, but it actually can do a lot at good times, so, that I feel like is really good, so, you know, good on you, Foil Squeezer. You used to have been a pretty bad weapon, and now after everyone started playing with the weapon, everyone realized it's actually really amazing, because it outranges a lot of weapons. Um, and then next, we have the S plus tier, which is funny because, you know, whatever. Uh, S plus tier, weapons that are... The, the rest of the weapons up here can be used in competitive, so... Um, yeah, so let's just get into them. For the first weapon, I have the point ninety six gal. Um, if it wasn't for that SRB2 dude, which I think everyone should know him by now, if it was, if it literally wasn't for him, I would have waited, I would have, uh, placed this weapon, I think, right next to the 96 gal deco, because it's, well, you know, after receiving so many buffs, um, it's really good. It's got some pretty good accuracy, even though the biggest hurt is that it, it is kind of ink hungry, and it does have mobility issues, but you know, sometimes, well, then again, have you ever played with a weapon and you just ran out of ink because it was just that hungry of a weapon? I feel like that's more common with the Splatter Shot Pro than with the 96 because the slow fire rate. Um, and you know, the fact that the main weapon can somehow like paint better than the Splatter Shot Pro is like, what? <laughs> and the fact that it has sprinkler, the fact that it has armor, I mean, I don't know if it's better than the Splatter Shot Jr. or the Kensa Undercover Brella, but it's got range, it's got power. It's got sprinklers, so that, I feel like it's got a lot of good things that could go for it, so I feel like it's, I feel like hypothetically it's really, really, really good. Hypothetically. Uh, next I have the Kensa Undercover Brella. Uh, I feel like I sh I would have ranked this in, uh, X rank, if, um, or the, uh, X tier, if, um, it didn't receive so many nerfs. And the most notable is the, um, the special points nerf. Now it takes, like, I think 200 or 210 points to get it special. So it takes a lot longer, and it doesn't paint as efficiently as the Splatter Shot Jr., but it does have Torpedo, which that helps it suppress its opponents. Torpedo is uh, better than, you know, having it with Splat Bomb or Ink Mines especially. And, you know, it giving Ink Armor is better than it having Splashdown. And, I mean, I don't know if it's better than having Baller, but Ink, uh, ink Armor with a weapon that can paint really well and just throw torpedoes everywhere, that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. I think that's why everyone likes to use this weapon. It's because even though the main weapon itself is pretty... I think this is like the perfect example of a weapon that gets massively carried and massively potential unlocked because of the kit. So, yeah, that that's a thing. Splattershot Jr., another ink uh, armor weapon, but this one is like ridiculous because it like... The fact that it paints unnecessarily amazing as a beginner weapon is like wow and it's kind of funny it's really funny how beginner weapon the first weapon you start out with the weapon that's like noobs are supposed to use is one of the best weapons in the game because it's the best painting weapon in the game like isn't like i find that just weird how can a weapon that is for low levels be this good you know <laughs> i just find that really crazy splat bomb ink armor obviously really good it's just the most standard weapon but like the fact that it paints a lot, if it wasn't for the fact that it paints like a god, it would have been right much lower, and I mean a lot lower, like so much lower, Enzap would be used, you know, more efficiently than Spyroshaw Jr., same thing with the Kensa Undercover Umbrella, if it wasn't for the fact that, you know, Spyroshaw Jr. did not paint amazing, it doesn't have its new ink tank that's only available for the Spyroshaw Juniors, the 96 would have also been better too if it wasn't for that, you know, if it wasn't for those really neat buffs, so... Good on you, Splash Shot Jr., just good on you. So, I feel... one, But the one thing that I placed it... I placed it down here. 
because I'm not sure how it does. Like, I, I know it's, like, probably hypothetically the best weapon in Splat Zones. But there's also the other modes. I'm not sure about Tower Control. I'm not sure about Rainmaker. Clam Blitz, it could do well. I'm pretty sure it can. But I'm not sure about, you know, other modes like Tower Control, for example. I think Tower Control is probably, like, one of those modes where I'm just not sure how it does on it. But it, it probably could do good on it. Probably. Uh, next, I have... Both the Tent Umbrella and the, the Camel Tent Umbrella, or the Tent Umbrella Camel, or Camel Tent Umbrella, I, I don't know the world name with it, but whatever. This is the prime example of a main weapon that's kind of ridiculous. I mean, it doesn't paint like Spireshot Jr., but it has insane killing potential, and it has a shield that is massively durable. I mean, yeah, it's received many nerfs where now shorter range weapons can break it a bit easier, but more than likely... The only short range weapon that people are going to play with is the Spire Shot Jr. and Splatter Kenta Spire Shot, and that's literally it. And the, the hype and the chances that both of them are going to be together fighting on this one tender bro, I mean, yeah, that that might be huge, but which is why you want to equip a uh, quick respawn with it, because you, you don't want to be searching for kills. You want to be searching for teammates that you can protect, and you want to be searching for pushes that you can push, which is why you know having Beacon and Bubble Blower is really good. I mean, again, Bubble Blower has received many nerfs, but like the tac the uh, the way you can actually use the Bubble Blower with the Tender Umbrella, you know, shoot the bubbles with the shield, and that the shield will just pop the bubbles, and the shield will also act as a shield on top of a Bubble Blower, which is supposed to be a shield, which is a shield that's supposed to be a shield. It's like that, that, that's unnecessary. That's unnecessary, and it, but it's really good, and that's why I think this is probably the best Bubble Blower weapon in the game, definitely. And then you have the Tenta Camel Umbrella. Um, Ink Mines doesn't do a lot for it, but then again, does it really matter? Because, like, Tender Bro is so good that you might as well just give it any sub. So, a defensive weapon with Ink Mine is pretty good. It's pretty good. But then, you know, giving it Ultra Stamp, you know, shoot the shield out, and then just whip out your Ultra Stamp. You can't be stopped. It's just, it's so ridiculous. It's pretty ridiculous at times. I would have rated higher if, um... A lot of more people actually started using it. I mean, yeah, it can be used really efficiently, but admittedly, it's one of the most difficult weapons to use in the game. So, I feel like that's why I have it down here. If it was a if it was a lot easier to use, then you know, because I mean, I myself have some trouble using the weapon, and if I didn't, then I would have been maining the weapon more often. But you know, whatever. Um, splat zones. I'm not sure how it does in splat zones. All the other modes, I feel like it does really well on. Uh, I mean, it could do well in Splat Zones on certain maps because, you know, the shield does... Act if you shoot the shield out, it actually does paint really amazing. But, again, this is on certain maps with Splat Zones that it can do that. Like, if it was on Kelp Dome, it might be pretty awkward because then you wouldn't want to shoot for the zone so much often. You want to actually shoot for, like, the sides. So, yeah, that's... It's just a ridiculous main, good main weapon. Uh, next, I have the Kensa Splat Dulis. Now, the reason why I rated it higher than the um, the regular Empery Dooleys is because it has uh, Baller. And I think Baller is... It, well, Baller nowadays in the meta is better than Inkjet. Suction Bomb, not sure how much better that is than Curling Bomb. It kind of de decretes the fact that it might have a bit of a harder time traveling, but Suction Bomb is kind of a lethal bomb. Like, it's kind of like one of those stay out, uh, stay away from me bombs. But, you know, putting it on a Dooley, the doesn't really have that many problems trying to travel around places. I feel like that's just like, it's not really that bad. And you know, again, Baller. That's a really good special. Dooley's on their own are a really good main weapon, so... I don't know if I really have to go into reason why that this is probably up here. I feel like, I'm pretty sure you guys should like already know. It's got Suction Bomb, it's got Baller, and I feel like that should tell you, hey, this is actually a really good kit for a really good main weapon, so... There you go. Next I have the Tetra Dooley's. Okay, so... Long story short, I used to have like really thought that these duelies were bad, like really bad because they were duelies and duelies were getting nerfed hard back then. So I thought that, oh, you know, it's a dually and it doesn't paint and it doesn't have as much range as Sparshot Pro, so it's bad. And it's it's not custom dually sculptures. So, you know, and it's got, you know, Splashdown, so it's bad. Well, apparently not because it, you can slide with it four times, which that alone is really hard to aim at because not everyone the only way to actually properly aim at that is to not be in combat with it just you know shoot it before it even gets the chance to even know that you're getting that the tetra are getting shot at giving it auto bomb allows it to pressure people more better so 
you know, just throw an auto bomb, which can kind of like make them move weird, and then just chase them down with your sliding. And apparently during your sliding, you're still shooting. And that is kind of ridiculous. And if it didn't, if the weapon didn't have splashdown, I mean, it could use splashdown to its, you know, advantage. And I think the reason that is because, you know, when it slides around a lot, you would slide around to certain positions where you would use your splashdown. And that's what I think is what makes it kind of ridiculous. It's a really good weapon. It's a, it's a really good main weapon. But if it had something like way more aggressive, like, you know, splat bombing jet, that would be absolutely ridiculous. Probably might be a broken weapon. Goodbye. See you later. <laughs> but thank goodness it's not a broken weapon. Well, thank goodness it doesn't have the kit to make it a broken weapon or make it one of the most ridiculous things in the game. Uh, next, I have Custom Explosher. Um, <laughs> the main weapon itself is already un unreasonably amazing. This is a, a, the weirdest example of a weapon that could paint really amazing. Like, you know, the fact that the, the way it shoots, or, you know, the fact that it's explosion, when, again, when you know, it's shot explosion, or it's shot output, is like a burst bomb size, but maybe bigger. It's like a, it's literally burst bomb the main weapon. That's literally what it is, just, you know, slower. And it's kind of also hard to challenge it too. If you can really aim with the weapon, and if you're like really up close to people, you, I don't I don't think there's a way to beat this weapon up close. I think that's just the biggest point it has. It's really good from afar, and it's, you almost can't beat it up close. Unless you can get the aim on it better than the Exposure, which is, which is hard alone because the Exposure direct and splash damage does like 90 damage in total I'm pretty sure so that alone is kind of ridiculous but I guess like maybe if it was at like a distance like in the middle of the distance between its short to between the shortest range and the longest range of the explosher then you could beat it but the reason why that the custom explosher is up here is because that's baller so if you like challenge it in a way where the custom explosher can't really you know beat you then it just has baller and it will just you know Bing, pop, bow, you are done. <laughs> or maybe you might be done, or you will have to, you know, actually run. Or if you can, or if you're with the team, if you're like in a group of two and you're trying to pop the baller, that could do something, but that's if you can actually like, you know, see it coming. Custom Explosion is just really good. And the fact that it has point sensor, point sensor spam, you know, that's, you know, doing really good. So that's just, you know, it's just pretty ridiculous. <laughs> Pretty, pretty ridiculous. Um, next I have the mini spotling. I find it funny that we used to have been in a time where the mini spotling was considered underrated. But, you know, now that the tenor missile has received so many buffs, and now that people... Oh, no, here, here's what happened. The mini spotling has received run speed buffs, like, by, like, a small amount of percentage, like, 4 to 8% or something like that. Instantly, everyone wants to play with the weapon. And for a good reason, too. Just pair up run speed with it, and you're, like, going to places. Just shoot everywhere, and the fact that it paints, and it has burst bombs, so it's like, you know, just throw a burst bomb at your opponent, you're gonna get stuck, or they're gonna take some hits, and then, you know, just shoot at them, and then just, you know. Having burst bomb on a weapon that's got great mobility, great, uh, great kill time, and great, you know, duration, or great charge time, that's really good. That's really good. And pairing it up with ten of missiles, um... Maybe it could do better with a different special, hypothetically, but Ten of Missiles is still, you know, a really good uh, special to have. But it could be better on some other weapon used. Like, uh, another weapon that could be better used with Ten of Missiles, for example, is the Kansas Splatter Shot. Kansas Splatter Shot literally spams Ten of Missiles harder than the end zap. Because it, it only needs 180 points, which I kind of find it weird that it only needs 180 points to spam Ten of Missiles. And like, no one is seeing that this is really good, or should I say Nintendo isn't really seeing that this is like, really good. Such a bump. I've at first kind of thought that, oh yeah, like why would you want to use this over 10 attack, because you know, it's got Splat Bomb and Inkjet, and that, that's better, but like, now that everyone can aim at Inkjet, uh, Such a bump, I'm not sure how much better it is than the Splat Bomb, but depending on what you do with it, you can play pretty tactical with it, that's just the thing. And, you know, now that Suction Bomb has received a buff where it does, like, 220 damage compared to 180, um, that's also really good. So, Kansas Splatter Shot is just really powerful. And it, just like I said, this is another one of those weapons that would be the only weapon that could probably shred through the Tenumbrella because 
it's received a buff to where it can actually like shoot the Tenebrilla. I think like one of the buffs for weapons that can shoot down Tenebrilla was like it can deplete the shield 57% faster or something like that, which is kind of ridiculous. And you know, now that Suction Bomb does like much more damage now, you pair Object Shredder with the Kansas Bar Shot, you'll fight the Tenebrilla pretty easily. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Kind of ridiculous. Um, next I'll have the L3D. Probably the best inkjet weapon in the game. Actually, no. Scratch that. It, I think it is the best inkjet weapon in the game. Because, you know, pairing main power-up, only needing a pure of it. And then it does, like, 33 damage. And then it, like, paints really efficiently. And then it's really fast. And then it has range. And then it has burst bomb to pair up with its mobility kit. That's kind of ridiculous. That's kind of ridiculous. Maybe it should be rated higher. But... Again, it has inkjet, and everyone can aim at that, but then again, I feel like it's not that bad because, like, you know, first of all, this weapon is the main weapon and the sub-weapon, you know, that's really good. So, inkjet, and I feel like the reason why it's paired up so good with inkjet is because it's a mobility weapon, and, um, inkjet and burst bomb is, like, a mobility kind of kit, so giving it a mobility type S, that's really good. That is really good. So, <laughs> and the fact, again, it's really fast, so it's, like, Really amazing. Uh, next I have Custom Dually Squelchers. Maybe I should have rated this lower, maybe, but because it's received like two notable nerfs. The one of them being that it requires much more points to get Ink Storm. And the other is um, Ink Consumption, where now it, I think it takes like 1.2% ink instead of like just one. But I feel like I, I still have it up here because, you know, it still turfs really good. It has Splat Bomb and that's a really good sub to give it. And it has Ink Storm, and that's a really good special to have for a weapon that can already do turf coverage, and a weapon that can defend itself, and a weapon that has mobility, and a weapon... This weapon just has a lot. The only thing it doesn't have is power. That's really the only thing it doesn't have, but then again, that's why it has Splat Bomb. So there you go. Therefore, now it has power. <laughs> like, when it came out, and if one, I kind of just saw this weapon, I just knew. I just knew this had to be, like, a top-tier weapon one way or the other. Like, it just had to be really good. But, you know, now that it's kind of falling off a bit because of the nerfs, which, admittedly, I think it deserved, <laughs> I think it is a pretty alright weapon. It's a balanced weapon. It's a balanced top-tier weapon. I'll give it that. It's a balanced top-tier weapon. Kind of like the Splatbrella. The Splatbrella requires less points to get um, Ink Storm, but I think the reason why that it's better is because it has Sprinkler, and the fact that the main weapon itself... All umbrellas except for the undercover are just really good in general like the main weapon you know you just shoot once like the one thing that this thing really does well is in 1v1s like if someone's shooting at you just you know shoot them once and then pull up your shield and it's gonna get pretty messy like and I know this too because I've played with the spot umbrella a lot I used to I tried my hardest to main this weapon because of its kit but then I kind of like went over to the Sorella umbrella which apparently is better now in this meta Sprinkler and Inkstorm is just a good, it's just a good weapon. It's really good on stuff like, uh, Splat Zones. I mean, I mean, maybe this is one of those weapons where it's, like, really good on Splat Zones and can hypothetically be good in all the other modes as well, but for now, I won't know. But for now, I'll just keep it here. Uh, next, I have the Heavy Splat Lake Remix. I feel like this is, like, one of those weapons where it's, like, unintentionally good. Not in, like, not like the Ballpoint Nouveau, which I'll go over that when we actually do go over that but um heavy spelling remix really fun weapon to use like okay you pair up that run speed up right and then you could just shoot a bunch of people but you also have point sensor and point sensor you could just spam it now just spam point sensor now you know where they are now you just hide for a little bit just you know just for like two seconds and then just shoot at them that are point censored and then it has booyah bomb and booyah bomb is really good so just you know the a backline a weapon with Booyah Bomb, just like, it has way too many good things going for it. Not like Ballpoint Nouveau, but, you know, it does really good on tower control, because you could, you could, again, like I said with the Sparsha, well, I haven't said it with the Sparsha Pro, but, Sparsha Pro, Heavy Spotlight like Remix, just spam point sensors on the tower, because they have to be on the tower, and they will get point censored. And then now that it has Booyah Bomb on Heavy Spotlight like Remix, shoot it at the tower, they have to get off. They just have to. This could also work on Splat Zones, because Booyah Bomb can paint the zone it's not recommended to but it can 
paint in the zone. It's more of use to like push others. It's more of use to kill others. It's more of use to catch others off guard. But it's still really good on, you know, splat zones. I'm not sure how it does on clam blitz though. I mean, I feel like it can do good on clam blitz, but um, it can. It, I I can see it do it really well on uh, Rainmaker. Maybe even better than the regular one. Because, you know, it has Booyah Bomb, and Booyah Bomb can actually pop the Rainmaker Shield. Even if, if it had Object Shredder, it would absolutely decimate the Rainmaker Shield. And maybe even decimate the Tenebrilla Shield, in fact. So, yeah, just the fact that it's paired up with a kit that can un that unintentionally works with the weapon is just... I feel like that's really... It's just really good. Next, I have uh, both the Soda Slosher and the Slosher Deco. I don't know which one's better, because there's one that paints really well with the, you know, the Sprinkler and Baller, and then there's one that can play really aggressive with uh, Splat Bomb and Burst Bomb Launcher, which is, which I think is funny because this is, the, this is one of two weapons with Burst Bomb Launcher, because the other one is the, uh, the Bamboozler Mark II, which I have that in E tier, <laughs> so the fact that it's all the way in S plus tier is like, <laughs> it's kind of funny, but giving it a, there's either the aggressive kit or there's a paint or there's the uh, turf weapon the only reason why it's not rank x or it's not an x tier is because uh S S sasha deco has been nerfed in terms of special points sprinkler in a way was kind of nerfed but then it got a massive buff which is also why the 96 gal has also been like upgraded to like s plus tier instead of maybe a tier and what could have been b tier but it's sprinkler still really good but i don't know you either have one that can, like, do a lot of work with uh, Splat Bomb and Burst Bomb Launcher, or you have one that can paint a lot, really good on Splat Zones, really good on Clam Blitz, with Sprinkler and Baller, so. Actually, the more that I think about it, maybe they're, like, polar opposites. There's one that does really well on Splat Zones and Clam Blitz, which is the Sasha Deco. Then there's one that does really, that could, that could do really well on Rainmaker and Tower Control, with, a uh, you know, slot with a splat bomb and burst bomb launcher i'm not sure how it does on tower control but you know sloshers being able to slosh on the tower i feel like that could do some work and no one's just really realizing it so that's that <laughs> next i have the inkbrush nouveau i don't know how amazing this is but the one supposedly says that this could hypothetically be the best weapon in the game because it could go it can go around places place ink mines as traps just wherever it wants because like even if your team is suppressed you go really fast even if it, and when you equip that main power up on you might go like you know maybe an extra three percent faster but i don't think that's worth it but it, it goes fast and then you know when it goes around places it just places in mines as traps and the fact that it's a a weapon that could do some pretty good uh painting power and it only requires 160 points to get a baller isn't that kind of ridiculous? Like, isn't that kind of unnecessary to give it? So that's why... I, but I placed it here instead of X tier. Because I haven't seen a lot of people use it. I haven't, like, seen a lot of, like, it being, like, groundbreaking, game-breaking, destroying everyone and all that types of stuff. So, for now, I'm just going to put it here. Um, I could definitely see this being strong and, you know, Splat Zones. Maybe Clam... Yeah, Clam Blitz. Yeah, those two modes. I'm not sure about Rainmaker. Um, maybe tower control because that's baller and baller you can use that to play defense up at the tower obviously but baller is a good special and admittedly i think that's i feel like the ink brush's job is to always like farm specials and you know placing mines as traps but the reason but i think that's why it's so good regular ink brush the only thing it, it the, the one thing it wants to do is search for kills but it can't do that because it gets out range and splat bomb doesn't it's not supposed to do the job for it super efficiently it's just supposed to help it get the job done but inkbrush can't do that and then has splashdown so you know that gets cancelled out permanent inkbrush is just supposed to go around spamming ink armor but why would you want to do that when you have spire shot jr and then you have inkbrush which actually can spam baller and has ink mine to place traps so i can see why that is really good but again until i see it like a million people start using it then I'll place it in X tier. Uh, ne and then for the last weapons on the S plus tier, I have um, the Firefin Splat Charger and the Firefin Splatter Scope. I'm just gonna have them as one because I. There's one with extra range, and there's one that has depth per depth perception, and or depth and field. I don't know how it is, but and also 
has that weird, uh, you know, a little trick shot you can do with the charges where you can hide in your ink and then just come out and shoot people with that one hit KO. But <laughs> um, the reason why I have it here, I was I was thinking of putting it in X tier, but Splash Ball and Suction Bomb Launcher, of it, that is really good, but it's not as good as Splat Bomb and Stingray, so that's why I have it a tier lower. But that still doesn't, it's still really good. It does really amazing on Splat Zones, uh, even better than the regular Charger, too. Um, I, but I don't know how it does in the other modes. I think it, it, I'm pretty sure it can do well in all the other modes like Tower Control, because, you know, it's a Charger. It picks off people off the tower, and it has Splash Ball, so if you could do some weird tricky plays with the Splash Ball on the tower or any other places, then it could do pretty well. And then Rainmaker, um, Splat Bomb Launcher, you know, pop the Rainmaker shield, or, you know, cover up the place of the Rainmaker, and their team has a slightly harder time trying to actually push forward, so... And, you know, Splat Ball Launcher, you don't want to get anywhere near them. Or if you think you're confident in yourself, you would swim past them. But more than likely, as a team, you wouldn't want to do that. So you will only do something like that in solo rank. So in competitive, it's a different story. Clam Blitz? It, it, it can do pretty well on Clam Blitz. I'm, I'm for sure it can. I'm, I feel positive it can. So that's that, I guess. Um, <laughs> and then we move on to the X tier. AKA the best weapons in the game. Uh, well, I only one of them I think is the best weapon in the game, but um, we'll get over that later. These weapons, unlike all the other weapons in the game, have way too many good things going for it and can play be played on literally every single mode in the game. So, yeah. <laughs> so first of all, I have the L3 Nozzle Nose. Um, I was contemplating if I placed it up just a bit higher, but you know, it can spam, it can kind of spam baller, but it's big thing is that, it, you know, it can kill really easily. It's got really good painting power. It's, um, it's got curling bomb too, so it allows it to go to places. This is another mobility weapon, but just a, just a tap bit slower because it has baller. But that still doesn't excuse the fact that it's really good. I already explained about it with the L3D. It's got really good uh, painting power. It's got its three shot potential. And you know the fact that it, it it has really good mobility. It's like it's it's a really good weapon and it has really good range. So, but the one weapon that I feel like it it almost competes with in terms of really good is the Kansas Spider Pro. This is I feel like this is the prime example. This is the perfect example of a weapon that has a kit that just completely unlocks its potential. I mean, I think what's funny about the Kent Spiral Shot Pro is like I oh like I said it in one of my videos, but like if there was ever a Barry Spiral Shot Pro, I always I demanded Nintendo like please please give it you know Splat Bomb and Booyah Bomb, and what do you know, Kent Spiral Shot Pro looks sick and has Splat Bomb and Booyah Bomb, and also has a three shot potential, <laughs> or not a three shot potential. It, it it has a three shot you know kill, the kill time is pretty slow, but. You have main power up, and that allows it to get its two shot potential, which apparently is crazy. Because, you know, it's a super accurate weapon. Um, it has decent mobility, it has range. So, and, you know, you can't, you kind of can't compete with its, um, you know, accuracy. And now the fact that it has splat bombs, so that helps it better in terms of killing people. And then, of course, they have to give it Booyah Bomb. Which, that makes it even better for the killing. This is literally a killing machine. That's literally what this is. It's a killing machine. It. The only reason why I can see why people would want to underrate this weapon a bit to S plus tier is because it's got it's received a lot of nerfs. It, you know, it takes a little bit more main power up to get its, you know, two shot potential. Booyah Bomb takes a lot more points to get, but I feel like that literally doesn't matter. Booyah Bomb is supposed to be a tactical special, so you don't- you're not supposed to spam the heck out of it like Arrow Spray and just mindlessly use it. Splat Bomb, you can't- Oh my gosh, what was that? Splat Bomb, you can't nerf that, uh, so because- Well, the only re the only nerf it received was, you know, the hitboxes, which actually is a much more fair of a nerf than it seems. But just- The weapon is just- It's just got a lot of good things running for it. The only thing it doesn't have is painting. But if it could paint- then it's literally an overpowered weapon, because you know it can. It has a two-shot potential. It can. It, 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 let's just it, if it could. Let's just pretend like this weapon can paint. It can paint. Then it can kill you really quickly. It can work on all of the other. It can work on all the modes, and it will chase you down. This thing would actually be the most perfect killing machine weapon in the game. 
And the fact that it used to have been the best weapon in the game because it could spam Booyah Bomb, because it only needed 180 points, and it needed less perks of main power up just to destroy you, this was a literal monster. L literally, th th all the nerfs did was just tone it down a bit so that it's not a actual, it's not like a 100% killing machine that will destroy you every single second of your life. That that's literally all they did. So you better thank them for it. And then next I have the Sorella Brella. Um, I don't know how much better it is than the uh, Kansas Fire Shot Pro, but this, I, maybe it does lose to the Kansas Fire Shot Pro because of range, but. Um, Auto Bomb, I feel like helps, kind of, uh, I feel like Auto Bomb is a bit better than Sprinkler because it helps with, uh, combat, it helps with 1v1s, so, I feel like that kind of, like, does the gist of, I feel like it just helps it. Auto Bomb actually does help it because it's a low range weapon, technically speaking, it somehow gets outranged by Undercover Brella, surprisingly. It also has Flat Bomb Launcher, I feel like this is the best weapon with the, with the Bomb Launcher, because... You know, with the weapon that get, uh, with the main weapon that's really, really, really good, it can defend itself. So it's not you're not gonna mindlessly go to uh, random places. With okay, so let's just say um, what other weapon has uh, a uh, spot bomb launcher? Like you know, flings a roller. The wor well worst example, but when you want to go around mindlessly shooting bombs everywhere, when there's that one person that wants to challenge you, you can't challenge. Like let's just say it's a Kansas Fire Shot Pro challenging the flings a roller. Flings of Roller doesn't match the range of the Kansas Fire Shot Pro. Kansas Fire Shot Pro will kill it if it's shooting a bunch of splat bombs everywhere and it doesn't even know where the Kansas Fire Shot Pro is. But Sorella Brown, on the other hand, if it gets out range, just pull up the shield, run away, and just keep shooting more bombs. It'll just survive. That's just. That's the big thing about the weapon. The fact that it has a shield means it could do more things than other weapons could do. And the fact that it has Auto Bomb actually helps its low range ish, I think. I mean, if it had Torpedo, that would be really amazing, like the Undercover Brella, but, you know, Auto Bomb used to have been a bit controversial with the weapon, but, you know, I feel like Auto Bomb is just used to help the weapon in 1v1s, or, you know, the fact that you can actually, like, maybe do those two Auto Bomb, and it has Splat Bomb Launcher? You could do, like, a semi, you could do, like, a, you know, four Auto Bombs with a Splat Bomb Launcher, so, that, that's kind of crazy in a way. And then next I have the Splat Charger and the uh, Splatter Scope. I think you should already know why these are top tier weapons. I don't even know if I should even go over why that these are one of the best weapons in the game. Um, because, you know, even though they're gonna get. Even though they've gotten received a lot of, like, painting nerfs, I think. They're not really the best at painting. But it's full charge shot is. And it's, you know, it's a really fast weapon. Spot Bomb is used to, like, uh, you know, get people away from them that are trying to chase them down. And it also has Stingray. And what you're supposed to be doing is staying in the back the whole time and what you're supposed to be doing with stingray is staying in the back the whole time so literally it fulfills its role in doing everything it's supposed to do so that's why it's a really good weapon and if you play with the weapon and you're actually like really good at picking people off with the main weapon itself if you're really good with the charger you should know why the regular spot charger is really good it does literally amazing on all the modes except for turf war Maybe except for Turf War, I don't know, because like, you can hypothetically do well on Turf War, but it just, just does amazing. It just does amazing. And then we have the very, very last weapon of the X rank tier, or the X tier, and also the whole weapons tier list as a whole. In my opinion, and I don't care what you all have to say, because I have so many complaints about this weapon. In my opinion, the best weapon in the game is the Ballpoint Spotling Nouveau. This is the perfect example of a weapon that unintentionally has way too many things going for it. And I mean way too many. I mean so many, it is inconceivable. And I mean frustrating to even deal with. This is probably one of the prime weapons that, unless you're a charger, you actually can't challenge the weapon itself. And I didn't go over the weapon the last time with the, ball, the regular ballpoint spot, so I'm going to go over it right now. Here's what this weapon has. Okay, so it has great mobility, and it has a good charge time, it can recharge its charge time, it has a good ink capacity, because, you know, it doesn't really require, it, even though it requires 25% ink with the full charge, but you're not even going to notice that if you play smart with it, which you have to, it has, it has an insane, it has a painting mode that can actually paint pretty well, it has 
the long range mode that outranges the heavy spotlight and almost ranges the chargers. It has beacon, which is which is a sub weapon that's like kind of used to just you know get teammates back in the battlefield much more quicker. But then, of all things, it has ink storm, which is a weapon, a special weapon that you know helps it paint even better and push even better. I don't know why people underrate this weapon sometimes. This weapon outranges almost every literally other than the charges it outranges pretty much all the top two weapons in the game it could challenge almost every single weapon in the game other than the chargers it could challenge things so easily all you literally have to do is just hide for a few seconds like literally like maybe one second or you know when you're charging your time you just hide and then you just shoot people and they'll only realize you you're, that you're shooting them when you're dead because you just range them you just range them it has range mobility it just has so many good qualities and then it has beacon and ink storm oh my gosh I, I i i feel like i could go on a rant but like this weapon is the prime example of a weapon that i don't even know if nintendo could even fairly nerf like nintendo it's your fault that you spawned a weapon that has that perfectly has the greatest attributes that you can have for a weapon, a backlander weapon, and a weapon that cannot be challenged. And I mean just cannot. Oh my gosh. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we have finally covered over all of the weapons of the Splatoon 2 tier list of patch 5.0.1. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I'll do more, I'll do, you know, another Splatoon 2 tier list. After the patch comes out of where L3 gets nerfed and Splatter Shots get buffed. And so does the Luna Blaster, I heard. So that's really nice. So if you guys enjoyed watching this video, give it a like. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel if you really enjoyed this. Um, hopefully, I'll do another one of these tier list videos. I'll probably have to do like another one maybe next year in December. Because for all I know, uh, not many things could change. For all I know, someone could probably discover like, Hey, did you know that you don't need main panel Splatter Shot Pro? Like for all we know, someone could figure that out and be like, yeah, poor Splash Up is actually really good and stuff like that. So, we may never know. Again, if you guys enjoyed, give it a like, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Please give me your opinions on this. Please have as many people watch this as possible because I've worked really hard on this and I really, really need you guys' opinions. So, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and stay tuned for whatever we do next, next year. And please have a good day. God bless you guys and have a happy new year. And have a Merry Christmas as well.